Hi, it's Warren Whitlock here with another Emerging Technologies episode. Today, I was taking a look at what kind of emergency technology can really make a difference to you. And I decided to focus a little bit on AR. AR is known as augmented reality. There's also VR, virtual reality, and XR, which is somewhere between. But basically, it's using technology to help you go ahead and see what you're already seeing a little bit better. Okay, it's not just sight, but it can be enhancing whatever. We want to enhance the senses you have. We talk a lot about AI, that's enhancing your thinking, but what else can that and other technologies do to help you? And I'm trying to focus on ones that are available now. One of the real simple ones, and these guys here are, uh, it's, it, this is an Ikea app, and a lot of retail is going this direction. This is one of the, one of the bigger ones, and this is Ikea showing you, you can take a picture of where, what your room is, and then go ahead and see what the furniture will look like when you put it in. Fairly simple. Then it, it, you just go ahead and show it where you want to put something, and then it goes ahead and puts the item there. I would think that in my house, we wouldn't be putting a spot in the middle of a rug to see how it fit, but we would be doing some things to take care of this measurement and other things. Seem some more of the description. The other thing is that you can use the same technology to go ahead and when you take a picture of something, have it look up what there is. And that would be available now on uh, search engines like Google and others. You just go ahead and take a picture and then do a search based on that. Next, I want to show you. Here's another one. I really like this is the, uh, for education. No matter what you're studying, you sometimes come up with a question and you, you may not be able to rewrite it, type it into an AI, open up that window and, and lose your train of thought. Here's a, a, a product, Socratic from uh, Google. That's at socratic.org. All of these links will be in the description. And you can just go ahead and take a picture of what the question is and use it on no matter what the subject is, because it's just a general AI answering your question. and just take a picture of the problem and it'll give you the answer and talk to you about it and endorsed by teachers because it's getting, we're getting to the point where being able to feed back information given to you by on a test, say for instance, is not going to be the way we prove that we learn anything. It's going to be, do you know the subject and you talk about it and to really learn it, having the Socratic method help, helps you learn a lot faster. That's what the education researchers are telling us. And this one's a lot of fun. This is called Pixamotion. Right now it's an app available on Android or iOS. And when you use this, you put a picture into it. And so here's what happens when you do pictures. Note that just picking a few points and it turns it into motion. And another example of that, and I'll we'll show you a couple of more. And basically making your pictures more interesting, more like you're there. So that one was adding some bubbles there. And I love the background moving, the sky moving. It's just it's a way to draw a little bit of attention to the picture and help you when you're sharing it anywhere. This is a, a app that's available today and should be useful to you. And now let's get into something that's really useful and talk about what's coming out on contact lenses. I remember being at a presentation, oh, five years ago, and someone was talking about the goggles and the things coming. And I said, in 10 years, it'll be on contact lenses. And I got chided. It's just a guy who is very much a forward thinking guy and expert on augmented reality. He said to me, no, no way. Here's somebody doing it. We got five years for it to come to market. This one, not on the market yet, but I thought because we're talking about vision and enhancing what we see, it would be a good thing to share with you. And, and it's using some technology from this titanium based meta material unlocks strengths beyond nature. The cool thing about nanotechnology, and I think I've said before, we don't get to talk about nanotechnology enough 
It's either in some materials we don't know is changing our world, or it won't. It's just a little bit too early for some of this stuff. But this material is has been proven to work. I have seen products that were made out of nanotechnology. Graphene, for instance, is finding its way into all sorts of things. They had a lot of trouble scaling it up. I, gosh, it's been years since I saw graphene used in a bulletproof vest. Could stop bullets, but it's thin. Remember graphene being one atom of carbon. And it's a sheet that's one atom thick. Here we have building a lattice here out of titanium. And that's going to be used then in what's going to make these contact lenses work. I know, just notice that the picture is not contact lenses. <laughs> I'm not really sure whether that's a contact on something else or whatever. I just saw what it was and I knew it was something that I think is going to happen. And right now we're talking about 3D hologram. No big deal. It's not like virtual reality. Also saw news just today about an announcement from Meta, the Facebook people, where they are looking to compete with Apple and the big bulky virtual reality headset they have with something a lot cheaper. And in fact, have stopped development on one that was meant to compete with that at a lower price and now working more on their Ray-Bans virtual reality glasses. With the Ray-Bans brand made by the Meta people and and we're talking about something lightweight and of course soon something affordable so just about anybody can put on a pair of glasses and then you look at the you look under the hood at your car to see what to repair you tell the you ask what the problem is or you describe what the problem is and you ask about what to do next and it'll tell you where is the thing you pull on to get the oil stick and check your oil or where to put water if you need it in your radiator. And those are simple examples, but this is something we envisioned a long time ago in a discussion I had with the guy that came to fix my washing machine. I thought I knew how to fix a washing machine. I studied how the mechanics work in the electronics, and I had, had that kind of a background. And I said, I can take my own washer apart. I had done that before. We bought a new one. And... Uh, Two things. One, it was under warranty, so we didn't want to do the work. And two, I couldn't find a simple way to find what I thought was a circuit breaker or simple problem to fix. The guy came out and was able to undo a couple of screws and lift, and the whole top of the washing machine came off where it had been many frame pieces before. It was an innovation I hadn't heard about. If I'd have had an augmented reality headset or just today's YouTube, I could look that up and probably fix the problem here within a couple of minutes. The other thing that happened during that, and this is 30 years ago, the other thing that happened there was the man working on it was taking a phone call about setting up his next appointment on a cell phone. And this was in the 90s. It seemed like a big deal. And I was torn before, between saying, gosh, why are you interrupting? I'm having fun watching you. And since I wasn't paying him as my employee, it was he taking the interruption was okay. And now, of course, very normal that somebody's working at your house and gets a call about the next job. But think of the time that saved, the extra man hours of friction that's been relieved because now you actually can get the expert to give you an opinion really fast when that's what's needed. It used to be you try to do something like that. You have to call somebody, wait. Somebody would come out or that didn't know what they were talking about, some salesman. And now the actual guy can run a, a, a much larger business by himself because he's able to both be the expert and do the work. We'll get into a business discussion some other day about how well that actually works. And then finally, to have some fun here, let me show you the funnest thing I've seen this week. It's more research coming out of Google, and that's something called Game Engine. It is available now, but you pretty well need to, to, to be into the programming and understand some of that to actually use it. But just wanted to show you what is available. This is somebody who made the, the popular game from the 90s called Doom. And, and here we'll let it play a little bit. Instead of using 
the the AI to help you write the code for a game. You put in, let me play Doom, and it makes up a new Doom. The map, the gun, the action, everything has all been decided on the fly while you're playing the game so that you could play the game tomorrow and it would be a different game. This is a 90s game with 90s graphics and 90s gameplay. First shooter games have come a long way since then, but this was the original big hit for many years in the 90s. And already we're doing that. We've seen Atari games before from the 80s. Now we have these things from the 90s. Pretty soon, you'll be able to walk into any movie. And the question comes, what deed will it be to develop things when the AI can develop them for you a lot faster? And I saw something just yesterday, not much detail on it, but it was what somebody predicting where the next big entertainment hit is going to be which is they said what we're going to have a company that goes out and develops the engines to help you play such games and there are people in hollywood or entertainment or whatever are working on that right now and i think that's very possible remember keep a positive outlook to this kind of stuff while it's possible that the robots could all come together and kill us that the ai could screw up things so bad that it starts a thermal nuclear war Let's work with the assumption that we're here until that happens or better that it's unlikely to happen. And the scenarios of the people working on that stuff, keeping us safe and us being able to benefit more is there. So why not learn to use it? If you're going to be in a world with robot overlords, learn how to operate in that world by understanding something about the technology that's coming. And that's why we do emerging technologies to keep you up to date, give you some things. And hopefully in today's episode, you've seen a few things that you can go ahead and use right away. Give them a try. Links in the description. And we'll see you next time on Emerging Technology.